samples to measure with some sort of assay. So basically just experiment where you're measuring things. Choosing the plate should be the easy part. Unfortunately, you go to the shelf and there's like a bazillion options, including ones that you never even heard about, like 96 well half area plates, which by the way, are really, really handy. They let you reduce the volume while still having that nice 96 well format that's compatible with things like your multi-channel. And so I'll talk more about that later, but that's only one thing to choose, the well um, size. There's also just the number of wells, there's the color of the plate, there's the shape of the bottom of the well, there's things like deep well, and shallow and all these different things so let's go into them i'll go into each of these different things starting with the color which i went into much more detail on yesterday so i'm just going to briefly overview it here basically if you're doing something where you're measuring absorbance you're measuring color something like this you're going to want something that's clear and transparent if you are measuring something where you're actually measuring like light that's given off where you're measuring some sort of luminescence or so fluorescence which is a type of luminescence but people typically classify them separately like fluorescence and chemiluminescent type things with the chemiluminescence and bioluminescence type thing you're going to want to use these white um plates basically what's going to happen here is that the signal that's given off the light that's given off is going to be reflected back off the walls and into the center and you're getting a nice high signal if you're doing something with fluorescence you're going to want to use black basically the black is going to absorb some of that light that's given off and reduce the background and this can help you because with fluorescence you typically get a lot more of that like background noise from things like auto fluorescence where molecules just kind of happen to be fluorescent um rather, but they're not the molecule that you're interested in so black for fluorescence, white for luminescence, and um, clear, transparent for absorbance and colorimetric and cell-based things. If you want to kind of compromise between the amount of signal and the amount of noise, you might try like a gray plate, which um, kind of does a little intermediate. You might also have, if you're doing some sort of cell culture or microscopy combined with a um, fluorescence or a luminescence you might do something where it has the opaque so like the non-see-through walls but the clear bottoms the transparent bottoms so that's another thing that you'll see um, for those applications and again much more on all that in yesterday's post but today i want to talk about a couple other things in more detail starting with the number of wells so the number of wells doesn't just it's not just how many samples you have it's more important like how much volume you have because you can the wells you have to load like a third to a half or so of the volume so if you're working with something like a 384 well plate you might be able to go down to like five microliters or so but if you're working with a 96 well plate well now you can only go down to about 100 microliters um and so what if you have a smaller volume well you might say okay well let's go to the 384 well but this isn't going to be compatible with your standard micro channel um with your pcr strips with all of this stuff now there are different um, multi-channel pipettes that actually allow you to kind of like suck up from a tube and then this expands and so you can do it to like a 384 plate and things like this but again with these really tiny volumes it can be hard to accurately measure things um like when you're pipetting by hand um and maybe you have more sample than you could fit in one of those 384 well plates so there's also a compromise this like 96 well half area plates these are really really useful um so this is 96 well and this is a 96 well half area you can see that like some of the the actual well spot is actually smaller than the in here but the layout is the same so i can still use that same pipette to transfer things but now i have a sample volume that is up to that's only um that i can do like a 50 microliter reaction which is good if i have a lot of um if i don't have a lot of my sample material or and i want to do my reactions in smaller volumes and things like this the 96 well half area plate is really helpful for that so again 96 is kind of like the limit to where if you can comfortably work with like just multi-channels and things like this, doing things by hand. If you really stretch things, you can do a 384, but that's pretty tedious, as well as the machines. You have to make one of the most important things is that your plate is actually compatible with the machine you're using to measure. And a lot of times the machines can only do like a 96 well plate format, and they're not gonna be able to take one of these. And if you wanted to do one of these 384 wells, or they actually make ones with like even more wells for like things like high throughput screening, where you're testing a lot of different compounds with robots. Those are typically suited with like robotic machines. And so the 96 well is kind of like the most you can comfortably do, but then you can go higher with robots and things like this with really tiny volumes. But typically for your day-to-day -day stuff in the lab, you're working with like a 96 well plate. Um, so it's like 12 by eight. So a PCR strip is normally eight. So sometimes you might put your two plate like this if you're preparing it, sometimes you might put it like this whatever works for you. There's also plates with fewer wells. Um, and so basically 
Um, there's things like 24 wells, which are good for some cell culture. There's even like six wells. Those are good for like cell culture things. Um, maybe with the 24 wells, I often use those when I was like manually setting up crystallization screen drops. Um, once I kind of like figured out the condition and I wanted bigger crystal drops, I'd make them in these bigger wells. Um, but anyway, that's kind of getting off topic because when you're doing one of these biochemical assays where you're measuring something, you're typically going to be using one of these larger formats, most commonly the 96 well plate. So when I talked about the 96 well plate having a kind of like working volume of 100 to 300 or so microliters, that's for your standard plate. But there are also things that are going to be like deep well. For these deep well plates, you're typically not doing your assay in here, um, but you might be preparing things in here, especially if you have some component that you're going to be adding to multiple places in one of these plates. You might add like have a high amount of it in each of these wells and then use your multi-channel to transfer it into the corresponding well of your plate. So the deep well plates are really helpful for this. Um, and they make ones that will hold like one mil or two mil or things like this. Now, one of the other considerations you have to make is the shape of the bottom. So if you see here, um, this plate, this is kind of like a curved bottom, um, but there are also ones with a V bottom. And with the V bottom, basically it's going to make it so that you can more easily pick up the stuff in the very bottom, in the very base. So if, you, if your sample is really precious and you want to make sure that you're not losing any of it, the V bottom is going to be good for that. And it's good for like transferring things, etc. But that'd be really bad if you were trying to do some sort of microscopy. With the microscopy, you're going to want some sort of flat base, something where you basically have it flat. But a problem if you have it flat is then it's going to be harder for things to mix and wash properly. So for that, for mixing and washing, it's really nice to have like a round bottom. But then again, you're messing up the surface for your microscopy. And so there's also these things called, um, there's like a U bottom. So C bottom's like the round one. There's a U bottom where it's kind of like a compromise between the V and, or between the flat and the rounded. So it's like flat at the base and then it's got like rounded edges so you can more easily wash things and that sort of thing. They're also like square versus circular. So with the square ones, um, if you have a flat square bottom, that's gonna maximize your surface area. Um, even if it's not flat, you're still maximizing the surface area, but you're kind of like minimizing the amount of barrier between the different wells. And so if you have less of the like stuff in between the wells, you're more likely to have crosstalk, which can be an issue with fluorescence and things like this, where the signal's kind of seeping from one well into the neighboring well. And so the, um, the circular is better for that. Um, and, but the flats will maximize your surface area. And if you're doing something like microscopy um, or like the, the square will maximize your surface area. So for some sorts of microscopy and things like that, those, um, those square wells might be the way to go for something like that. So again, you want to use, um, typically you're, if you're doing some sort of measurement, you're gonna want some like microscopy or something like this. You're gonna want something with a flat bottom. So you have the nice consistent um, bottom that the imager can image. But the flat bottom might make it hard to wash. If you want something that's like easiest to wash, easiest to stir, all of this various things, you're gonna want something with a round bottom. Um, and speaking of stirring, if you have like one of those squares, that's gonna be really hard for things to kind of like circulate if you're shaking your plate. Um, so the circular edge is good for that too. But if you have a sharp corner, that's gonna make the stirring harder. And so having that rounded, a little bit of rounding is going to help make um, the flow more consistent and that sort of thing. If you don't care about stirring, you don't care about all of that stuff, you don't care about an imager taking an image, you care about being able to get every little drop out of the well, then you're going to want to look at something like a bee bottom, which is going to make it easy to get that stuff out of the bottom of your well. Okay. Now, speaking of the bottoms of the wells, sometimes they can be treated or like not treated. If you want molecules to stick, you might have to put on some sort of treatment to make them stick, especially if we're talking about cell culture. There's often like, if you want to grow cells on the plate, so actually get them to stick to the plate, you're gonna have to make this plate like hydrophilic, so water liking so that the cells will stick to it. You might even need to add some sort of coating like a um, poly B lysine, something that's gonna make it so that the cells will stick better. And so you'll often see like tissue culture treated or cell culture treated. It, um, use those plates if you're doing some sort of cell culture. Um, there's also plates that are like non-stick. So if you don't want your DNA to stick or you don't want your protein to stick, the coatings that'll help prevent that as well. If you want like a nice, even consistent mixing throughout your, um, throughout some sort of like enzymatic assay or something.
If you do want things to stick, um, you can either use some sort of coating that promotes just like general protein sticking, or you can have some sort of a specific coating like a streptavidin coating or something like this um, if you wanted to bind something that was biotinylated. So you can have some sort of specific coating that's going to bind specific molecules, or you can have one of those more generic coatings, or you can just have things not coated at all and just whatever, which is kind of like a medium binding type of situation. So that's the bottoms. And we talked about the sides, we talked about the size. So that's pretty much all the things that you need to consider, except that it's machine compatible. So that's one of the most important things is that it's compatible with whatever sort of machine you're using. Um, and so if you're wanting to do some sort of measurement with this luminescence, know that you're gonna have to have a different like detector than if you just want fluorescence or if you just want like color detection, so like absorbance. You're, some machines can do multiple ones of those, some can only do one or the other. So make sure that you have a machine that'll work with the, both the plate as well as your assay format and your assay type. And then plan things out really well in advance because it can get kind of stressful when all these wells are looking really, really similar. You might wanna take a Sharpie and mark off the ones that you've already done, put some tape over them, whatever works to help you keep track. Um, keep track of the pipette tip rows you've taken out um, and then set up your assay, go run it and hopefully it goes well.